people so this video i will cover what is data binding and why one should use it so a year back google introduced this library called android data binding and we'll see going further how one should use it and what are the benefits so i'm ajit i'm a developer uh, you can read my blogs on singajit.com i've been working on android for past two years now so agenda of this talk will be what is data binding why one should use data binding we will have some demos and live coding and then we'll have some takeaways from this video so what is this data binding right and how would it help me so let's see with some examples so look at this code snippet and see what's the problem with this code so you will see a pattern here right you'll see this find you by id find you by id and then set text set text set text right there is a lot of code that i have to write to set this task object in my view right so let's see some other example so this event handler the main part here is this presenter dot own add task and to do that i have to write this whole extra boilerplate code to find the button then set a listener on it and then on click presenter dot own add task right so how i can eliminate this boilerplate code that i have right so what if I told you there is this binding object that knows about all your views and you don't even need to typecast them and you can use them whatever the way you want. You can do set text, click listener, whatever you want to do, right? A bit better, you don't have to do find view by ID, right? Uh, you might think, is it a view holder which is holding my views and I can use that later? Uh, what if told you that binding object you can just set your model in it and it will take care of setting the values on your view right and more importantly you don't have to create this binding object data binding library will create it for you right and in layout for event handling you can just say own click presented out own that task no extra boilerplate code no set click listener nothing so what is this data binding right so google introduced this data binding in google to io 2015 it's built in inside your gradle plugin you don't have to add any external dependency right so if i have this already in gradle plugin how should i use it right how can i enable it so in your build.gradle file you'll go to this android closer and inside that closer you will head add one more closure called data binding and set enable to equal to true after doing that you will able to access data binding classes so after data binding coming to the picture how our layout would change so the one main change would be your whole layout will be wrapped inside this layout tag and then you will have this data tag which will have metadata about your layout file like what are the imports it would need what are the variables it would need right and then you can use those those import utility files or the variables inside your views like in the text view i'm setting android text equal to viewmodel.name and data binding is smart enough to get the name from the view model and setting it to the android text and what is this data class equal to user binding right so this user binding class is the name of the object the binding object that data binding create will create it for you right every layout should have a unique data binding class name right if you will not provide this data binding class name it will take the name of your layout file and name the class after your layout file name right uh, 
Now, how would I handle user events? To handle user events, let's say I have a button on click of this, I want to do some task, right? So I'll just say own click, it will give me a view and what I will do is handler, which is a object for me, which handles all the user events. I'll say own add task and if it needs a view model, I will pass it or otherwise, if it doesn't, then I'll just say own add task. So what are the binding expressions that I can use in my layout file? So I can use utility files, static methods, I can use call sec. So if display name is null, it will automatically figure out and it will use last name, which is similar to saying username display, display name not equal to null, then use display name or otherwise use last name. You can set your styling based on the condition, let's say large, then you will set dimension large padding or dimension small padding, right? And you can toggle the visibility of the view using the conditional operator, right? So what are the things which are not supported in data binding layouts? You can not use new, this and super keyword of Java. Other than that, any kind of Java code snippet you will be able to use right cool. so how would it change the way I use to inflate my layout files with data binding right. so what we used to do is generally in activities we use we call set content view which is activities method right now with data binding come into with the picture Android doesn't know about the tags which data binding is using, right? Like layout tag, data tag, variables, all those things, right? Only data binding knows about it. So you can't directly use set content view of activity. So what you have to do is use this utility class which data binding provides called data binding util and say set content view. Pass the context and your layout file. Internally, it also calls activity set content view method but after parsing the after doing the pre-processing of layout file in case of fragments or adapters you will use inflate right so now there there is also a bit of change you will use data binding util inflate method instead of inflators inflate method and parse your layout file rest of the parameters will be same of course right and then you can just say binding dot set user new user as it's saying. You don't have to do find you by ID, username, and then set text as it's saying, right? So how would, would your view models look like? So there can be multiple types of view model. One is for one-way binding, where you have some static data and you just want to set it to a view. In that case, you will just have a simple Pojo and in that Pojo you don't even need to have setters you can just have getters let's say in this case username I'll just have a get name method nothing else right and then there's another type of view model which is used for two-way binding in which case whenever I type something on the view it should update my view model in that case I'll be adding setter as well I'll have user, get name and set name. Now there is third kind of view model. So let's say in your page, you are loading the data from an API call, right? So when the API call returns you a model, you want to set that model in your view model to update the GUI. Right. So let you, let, let's say you have a list of to-do tasks which you are fetching from the API, right? And now our layout is using a view model to render the tasks. Now I have the data from which is coming from API and I have this view model. I need to update my view model with the latest to-do tasks. When I set the tasks in the view model, it should update the view, right? Because the new tasks I have fetched should be displayed on the view. In that case, I'll use this method notify property changed. 
and that will take care of updating the view as well right we will see that in detail in the demo so yeah talking about the demo let's see how we can do these things right uh, so I have this demo application architecture uh, so you have this activity activity has this layout activity doesn't have any logic as such for any kind of logic it delegates to presenter or controller whatever you call it and presenter takes care of talking to database or API client and getting the data for you and performing any any kind, kind of logic and based on that logic it will call the activity to update the UI so this is the current architecture that we have we'll see how it changes with data binding coming into the picture so let's see one way binding with static data let me close everything uh, I'll open this main activity right so before going there let me show you what this app does right so I have this to do app which lists all the to do tasks that I have with task one, task name description and the time and to add a task I'll just simply click on this button and say task privacy and description file and done and it adds the task to me list right so now we will see how this particular row is rendered right so this is a list view and to power the UI of list view we use an adapter right so we will go to that adapter which is tasks adapter let's go inside this tasks adapter and see what get view does so if you notice we get the inflator from the context right and then we inflate the task layout and in that task view we fetch all the views that it has we find you by id and then set text on each of the view right so we'll see how we can remove this boilerplate code with data binding right cool. uh, before all that to know yeah so in my case i have already enabled it so it's fine but in your case if you are starting with a new project make sure that this closure is there with unable to equal to two. right so let's see how we can change this so i'll start with the layout file so as you remember we'll encapsulate all this inside this layout tag and then all I need in this view is this task because that is all being used to set the UI right so I'll say I need some data and the class will be I'll say task binding okay. uh, then I have this variable and which will be my task and the type of this would be this task which is this right now I can use this task to set the views so let's see how we can use it so you, you will use this kind of expression and say task dot title see that's auto suggestion as well so you will know you are not writing any wrong code so let's add this here as well task dot description and then we have the creation date new model task dot creation date and if you do a command b on these it will exactly tell you which method is being called of the model right so in this case i am not having any view model just have this view this model uh, which has these getters for me nothing else right now let's see how the inflation will change as i told you we will be using data binding util class to inflate our layout right and it needs the inflator 
and then rest of the parameters remains exactly the same no change over there and now it will return me this binding object so in my case will be task binding because i mentioned it over here right so in this binding let's see what happens if i do dot it says set task how does it know that it has to create this method it knows, knows it from here so any variable that you declare here binding will create a setup for it and that's why you see it here now all i need is this and say set task and i'm done so all this will be gone and i'll just say binding root get root so we need to return view and this will be gone and that's all you need to do over here clean right so we have reduced a lot of boilerplate code with the help of data binding and now we just have this one liner code which takes care of setting our view and updating it right cool Let's get back to the presentation so what we did is we wrapped the paint view group inside this layout tag move all the namespaces if you have any in the layout tag define the metadata of binding inside the data tag as we did we declared a variable then inflate the layout using data binding mutate and then set the variables defined in data binding tag in binding object and you are done right let's take another example of two way binding so in this app where can i use two way binding right so while adding the task i have these two edit text boxes right and on click of done what i do is i fetch the text from these two edit text and then add it in my database right so this is where I can use the two-way binding. So let's see. I have this add task activity, right? And on click of add task on this turn button, click of this turn button, I call this add new task, which takes which takes the edit value from edit text box and passes it to the presenter says okay this is my title this is my description right so let's see how i can remove this particular code and use data binding instead right to do that i will need to create a view model so so that i can hold the state of the view right I'll call it view model uh, then inside this create add task view model right and in this view model what i need is i need two things one is i will need string title right and other one is description right and for both i need Setter and setter. Right? Setters are because data binding will use these setters to set the latest values. Right? Cool. Now let's go to the activity, go to this layout file and make the changes. Wrap everything inside this layout tag again. Right? Then move the namespaces to the topmost tag and now data. So I'll call this add task binding right and I'll declare this variable so I call it view model and this view model will be our newly created 
view model which is at task view model right now in my edit text what I will do is text equal to add view model dot title right similarly in description I call description all right now this bit of change here for two binding so remember for one way binding we used to do this now for two way binding you have to do one more extra thing you will add this equal to as well and your layout is done now let's get back to the activity and see how we can change it so first thing first create a main view till and set content view pass the context and inflate it will provide, provide you the binding object and it will be add task binding right now let's see what this binding needs it needs set view model and our view model will be add task view model and nothing else right now we need this this view model over here so now what i will do is i'll just say view model dot get title and then view model dot get description and this code is gone what you can also do is instead of passing like this what i can say is will take the add task view model view model and use view model dot get title view model get description right and now we have done building this which is here i'll just say view model and over here i'll just go with enter this right more load of boilerplate code awesome and now my building thing is about to be a field in this type over here and even my view model need not to be a field i can just say like this and of course this needs to be final and i'm done Cool. So we removed this five lines of extra code, right? Which used to get the view and get the text from it, then set it, right? Then pass it to the presenter to add it to the database. Cool. So this is the two binding. What we did here is we created a view model to hold the view state, created setters for the fields added this tiny equal to sign to assign the values back to the view model whenever you just change it right uh, the rest of the things like encapsulating it everything inside the layout tag and all those stuff remains the same as one way binding so let's see how we can handle these events right let's take a look at that so for simplicity let's take it this code itself right i have this turn button and on click of this turn button i want to do this add task let's see how we can do that so in this binding i'll go to this view now what i'll say is on click i want to call some method of presenter which means i need a presenter what i'll do is i'll create one more variable and call it presenter and presenter will be my this presenter right right now 
successful presenter dot on add task and remember what this guy takes takes this view model okay and you have to go this particular method let's do that uh, this takes in view model so I'll pass the view model which we have over here view model now it will not directly work because this own click method provides this view object and then you need to do this this particular arrow sign so this is if you have worked on coffee script this is like coffee script like syntax you have this function and which part which has this view as a parameter and inside the body you do this right so that's what is happening over here presenter root on a task you will pass this view model and you are done which means you can remove all this code from here and just say finding dot set okay a task tool or I'll just call binding dot set presenter and the presenter that I created and I will done. So you will notice that it's showing it in red color, which means binding has not shown it really yet. In those kind of cases, you can rebuild your project and it will just work fine. So sometimes it happens with binding that sometimes it doesn't create the setters so something like that on the fly you might have to repeat it let's wait for it meanwhile try and it's really done for you okay but yeah if you fill the studio and reopen it, it will definitely gonna work. Okay. There will be no problem over there. Fine. So you saw how we can remove the collected code from here, right? So we have removed that event handling totally from here and moved it to the layout. Which is over here. Right? And if you want, might want to see having it with any error, you can check that by running the app. So that if there is any obvious mistake, then you can see for that. So it's installing APK and everything. So there is no problem at all. This is all to your issue which is extract here otherwise it would have shown any compiler error if it was there any right so everything works fine good and everything works as well so, so now let's get back to the presentation and see so right so we already saw what we did we added the event handling to the view itself with on click. Now we'll see how custom bindings works in the data binding. We can you can create your own custom bindings and use that. So in this case I'm creating this set adapter binding which sets an adapter on any kind of adapter view. So we just call view dot set adapter and it will set the adapter to the to your list view or grid view or whatever right whatever kind of view or spinner let's say for that matter so what you will do is in your layout file you will say add colon set adapter and call this so you notice this there is this static method right so remember what i told you about the keywords which are not supported in data binding 
new super entities are not supported so you can't say new task adapter instead of that you will have to use this factory method for new instance and pass the tasks from this view model to the adapter so that adapter takes care of creating the views using these tasks models and it will set the adapter to your list view and you are done don't have to do anything else right cool so takeaways so use one way binding to update the data on ui two way binding to update view model from ui right don't extend view model with base observable for static data you don't have to do that you will update you will extend your view model with base observable only when you have to update the data in the view model on demand and based on that you have to update your ui use custom bindings to avoid duplication and make code reliable and readable uh, this is so as we saw the example right so set adapter you don't have to do set adapter so in any of the activity now so let's say you have five activities and each activity has this list view and in each of them what you would be doing is find view by id get me this list view and then set the adapter right so that is duplication over there you can remove this duplication and put it into a custom binding in a common place and use this custom binding in all the activities and do not write too much logic in your layout file yes writing too much logic in your layout files is not recommended because it is harder to test it is testable but you will have to test it in your integration tests or instrumentation tests instead if you keep your view logic inside your view model it will be easy to unit test and unit unit tests are much cheaper than the integration tests in in terms of time right so that's the idea behind not writing too much logic in your layout file uh thank you folks thank you for watching this video uh for my further videos you can subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you like the video i'll be doing more of data binding videos later uh i'll be showing you when to update the ui on demand and how we can extend the view model with base observable also i'll be doing some videos on the design patterns how we can change our design pattern using data binding and how good it would be and yeah so thanks a lot guys